um, to present a, a, a quick overview of a network and maybe to come back to this uh, title, the COP is already happening. When I'm looking around in the world now, I don't have the impression that what will be discussed at the COP is already happening. It's rather the opposite. But if we look more carefully, uh, as Mark was pointing, uh, there are places in the world where transition started long ago and where you can already see, at least in part, uh, what a, a more sustainable city could look like. For instance, um, if we take a look at Montsartou in France, um, a small sustainable city in the middle of the unsustainable French Riviera, for those of you who know this region, um, it's 10,000 inhabitants between Cannes, Grasse and Antibes. It's really um, uh, a place known for real estate interest, high pressure on land, mass tourism. Um, but if we took a look at Montsartou, uh, in a nutshell, if I may say, um, it's three primary school canteen in, in the city, served by the city. Um, about 1,000 lunches per day, 100% organic and local. Yeah, that's, and local, you, you, you hear it well. Uh, so what is the secret? I think that there are five sides of this secret. I will browse them um, together. The first is a sustainable kitchen and wood, food waste management. In Monsanto, it's really food waste fighting and a local and organic meal at uh, two euro, one cents. So the same price as industrial catering average in France. Um, the second is food related local economy and job creation. Vegetable mostly produced by a complete municipal food chain, a municipal farm, the three guys that you see on the pictures here with the kids are free civil servant farmers. Third, sustainable urban planning and agricultural land use. Look at the number, six hectare, 700 meter from the city center, 25 tons of organic certified vegetable produce. Fourth, healthy food education and sustainable behavior change. The idea is that the canteen of the school is the school for food education. We don't have that either. Where do we learn about uh, food education, if not uh, um, in, in, in the family? The school has to take this role. Every day after lunch, as you see on the pictures, the kids, for example, are measuring food waste. Um, with every dishes uh, separated and discuss with the cook how to improve it, how to reduce that. Uh, fifth, and that's very important, sustainable integrated governance. Cities don't have official competence in food and Monsanto said uh, a center for sustainable food and education. In a way, it's their own uh, food department of a municipality, uh, I may say, an unofficial food department. So as a summary, and I think it's nothing better than taking a quote from someone from, from, uh, from the field. Katie is uh, one of the chef of one of these three primary schools, and they work hard with the kids on many dishes, and in particular on the chart gratin, usually Kids don't like that much, child gratin. They adjust the recipe. I think they, they change it four or five times. And now all the kids like it. Another way to, to make a, a, a summary is a scheme. I, I prefer that kind of scheme, an unusual scheme to leave a, a lasting impression. Um, uh, it's uh, the so-called Monsanto five leaf clover. So five leaf is better than you know four. It's already very good, but five is even better. So 
the canteen is at the art of a systemic transformation of, of a territory. What is the story behind? Monsanto has been selected within the 97 European cities as urban good practice for their sustainable and integrated governance, which means that for six other cities have applied to take inspiration and implement uh, Monsartu practice. Altogether, they constitute the biocanteens, one of the 23rd Eurobac transfer networks, which is experimenting how to transfer a good practice. So now I would like to, to take a tour, uh, a short tour or on these um, six transfer city for, for what they achieved from the transfer and in particular focusing on our topic of, of food sovereignty. Here we are in Trajan in Bulgaria. It's the first grown apple from what? The first grown apple from the Trojan municipal farm. They start to build a farm in two years of the transfer periods of the network. We, we asked Teresa Georgia uh, to explain about the challenge to build a municipal farm in such a so short time. Well, at the beginning, we thought it's like a mission impossible. We thought it's going to be very difficult and it sounds like a huge project as it is. But step by step, we managed to focus on every action on, and on every details and uh, with the help of our biokin teams, uh, partners and lead expert and expert on local level in Trian, we managed to um, upgrade the system and to create a municipal farm, a farming system on a municipal level that will feed the kids in the kindergartens with local and organic fruits and vegetables that we truly grow on our own and on our own land. But Maybe one can wonder why a city such as uh, in, situated in a rural area as Trojan is struggling to build a municipal farm. Where the lowest price wins the procurement bidding. And so we wanted also to change that because that's a very um, stupid thing to do. We are feeding our kids. We want them to eat healthy, to live a sustainable life, to grow as... Uh, healthy and um, fit kids and right now we have uh, let's say 10 percent of production that we produce or uh, on our own and we don't rely that much on the public procurement so a municipal farm is a small but significant step and symbolic uh, both symbolic and concrete step of a city to get back in control of its food Let's go to Italy, to Rossignano Maritimo. They, they have a totally opposite strategy. They are working with a large uh, a catering company. Um, we ask Ilaria Rebecchini, uh, vice mayor, to underline uh, that working with a, a, a large uh, a catering company, they are already at 65% of organic in their canteen meal, and they are going to increase. The raw materials required are, mol, are, uh, are almost entirely of biological origin and or a short supply chain. So the issue, of course, is that it's easy uh, or oh, it's easy. It's possible with a large catering company uh, to, to provide organic, but they cannot guarantee local sourcing. Uh, we are Rossignano Maritimo is the, in the middle of Toscany and it's a, a, a very rich uh, a rural uh, production area. So uh, Rossignano review their, their, their tender, uh, their tendering process. And, and Ilaria is, is explaining about that. In March, the new minimum environment criteria for the canteen service were approved by the Ministry of the Environment included in the new tender, the most relevant aspect of which are highlighted. Introducing of uh, additional organic or short chain food compared to the current one as in the menus. So the, the case of Rossignano is interesting because they keep the lead 
working with public procurement uh, without self-production. Let, let's go now to Portugal. In Torres Vedras, they were already recognized as a good practice in Portugal for their sustainable and healthy food canteen program. And um, also because they, they, the canteen are, are used as a mean to change the, ter the territory. Uh, Paula Rodriguez explains the challenge the city of Torres Vedras has in this area of Portugal of conversion of the agriculture uh, in the area of Portugal. We are a, a very high rural uh, area with uh, a high agriculture um, sector uh, here in, in, the, in the country, um, but we are not uh, organic. We have uh, a very small percentage of area producing in organic. So with, um, with the bio canteens and with uh, the, this, these good practices of increasing the, uh, and introducing the organic products in the, the school meals, we intend to, um, to stimulate uh, the, the, the farming sector to be more sustainable so Paola explains how the city leverage on canteen to try to tackle this problem. So as a public sector, we want to prove that it is possible to work with public procurement in alternative ways. So we want to be an example that with, with, uh, by being creative, we can uh, rearrange the, um, the criteria for the tenders that can go uh, directly to what we want to reach and we want to promote the short uh, food chains. We want to promote the local economy. We want, we want to promote sustainability. And we want to, to promote, especially, the education of the new generation. So it, it's interesting also the, the position of a city, of a public sector, as, as, a, as an example for the, the economic uh, uh, players around. Uh, the city, quoting Kevin Morgan, expressed their purchase power to play a role in, in a role which is not official for them, uh, in not the normal role in, in, in influencing their local agriculture. Let's go to Belgium, to Pays des Condrues. Uh, it's not a, a city, it's, it's a local action group of seven villages, as uh, Marc was, uh, was explaining. And um, in particular, they, they have created Devenir, a social incubator for kitchen staff that provide kitchen services and for young organic farmers. Uh, Kathleen van den Oven explains how the young organic farmer incubators work. The aim of the farming incubator is to support the establishment of young farmers who do not come from the agricultural world and who often have difficulties in finding land on which to operate. We were lucky to have a partnership with the municipality of Modav, which provided us with agricultural land that we can, in turn, make available to young project holders in order to facilitate their installation. We provide them with land, but also infrastructure, such as greenhouses, irrigation, equipment, and especially technical support and support for entrepreneurship. And this is thanks to a partnership we have with the association Devenir and CREAJOB that we can provide this guidance to ensure the success of the project. So they managed to, to set a sort of ecosystem connecting canteen schemes, training from, for unemployed people, market gardeners, job creation, uh, supply of, of the canteen, but also of, of consumers around. The canteens are increasingly supplied exclusively with vegetables produced in the farming incubator. We have a lot of projects in the incubator that are doing market gardening, making herbal teas, experimenting with a lot of new crops and so on. All these productions are sold directly in short circuits, either directly on the production site or in small markets near the incubator. So it's really the local population that benefits directly from all the productions of this farming incubator. So he, here you have a, a schemes of this uh, incubator. 
Um, and, and it's clear that what is emerging is, is this ecosystem, uh, including organic producers, canteen supply, combining, combined with household supply. Um, now I will rush to finish this tour, but uh, not without mentioning the two last Biocantin city partners. Vasily in Romania, the municipality is not in charge of uh, canteen school, of, of schools canteen, sorry, but uh, canteens for daycare social centers. And Tricala in Greece also engage in aiding towards uh, establishing a canteen schemes that doesn't exist. Um, um, in, in the city. So in synthesis, our bio canteen cities leverage on their uh, school canteens for different reasons. To initiate organic and local self-production, to gain autonomy from public procurement processes, to play a role in local agriculture policies and to consolidate forms of sustainable food sovereignty. Now to conclude, I would like to come back to the, the transfer process. So if COP, COP is, is uh, already uh, to, happening today, uh, as we, we say in the title, in certain cities, the, the purpose of networks like Urbat, Urbact Biocantine Transfer Network is to use uh, uh, the, the experience of this city to support other cities to build their own food democracy and, and food sovereignty. I must admit that as lead expert starting this project for your back, I was a bit cautious about this notion, you know, good practices and, and transfer processes. So we worked hard with the seven cities, partner cities, to, to design a series of interaction tools to facilitate transnational exchange and influence and mutual inspiration uh, beyond this idea of teacher learner uh, uh, postures. So uh, the city together, they, they slice in a way the good practice in eight transfer module here, you've, you've got the, 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 the work plan for the, the transfer period with the, the eight uh, transfer module. I would like to focus to give you an idea of this tool on two of them. Um, one, we, we call them micro good practices. Um, uh, coming back uh, 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 to Trojan, um, Elena Ivalcheva was saying, I, I, I did not know how to, to introduce uh, this new practice. And um, uh, she used these uh, little tips uh, on, on that, that the cooks could, could exchange. And from that, we, we, we build, we collect all these uh, kitchen micro good practice, we call them, um, in a sort of, of, of recipe. Uh, it's a word of a kitchen and it, it works very well, a recipe. We've got a booklet of these introduction recipe to change the practices uh, in the kitchen. And we also build one uh, on, on food education because it was very rich. So here we use it as an entry point uh, to start the transfer, which is uh, very to, to, to get, get the buy-in on the transfer. Uh, a second and last example uh, on food governance. So here, the, the idea is how you raise awareness of public authority on land use. How do you start the discussion? And um, we, we build uh, with each of the city a vision, uh, a forward-looking vision on land use and, and local production and food sovereignty. So um, we help them to make a, a rough diagnosis. You see here the first version of this diagnosis with the map that they could get from, from their local urban planning services. And uh, um, um, we, we, we made posters for, for each of them. The title is clear. What will we eat in our city in 2045? So far away, let's start the discussion. So we, we add behind these posters uh, an approximation, a calculation. It has not to be um, uh, accurate. It's there to trigger the conversation, to talk about uh, the future and land use, and to put this poster to set the debate. 
So now after two years, we, we co-design with the seven city uh, an entire toolbox for transfer. I don't have time to present uh, from all the tools from, from peer review, from, from case collection, from, from challenges, from uh, even um, a, a, a game, uh, we call it SimFarm, to, to build your, your uh, uh, transfer uh, uh, process. We are ready to share with other cities uh, and, and uh, beyond. And maybe the, to finish it, the best proof is that Monsanto, always uh, in front, uh, reused this toolbox already launching in, in 2019, a second transfer network between 10 French city. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Francois. That the first question I wanted to ask you actually after this very uh, thorough presentation and example is, is the kind of project you foresee at the moment in line with the success of Biocantin One? You just um, mentioned it actually, but. Uh, I, I think that it's time to say that we would like to build a, uh, maybe I, I can share again my screen uh, for a, a, a last slide. I did not dare to, to show it, but I think it's time uh, now to, uh, uh, to show it that we would like to launch a Bio Canteen 2. Um, uh, it's an opportunity, uh, a, new, a new tender from your back, and we are looking for for transfer cities that would like to, to profit from this experience and, and, uh, and work with us uh, in, in transferring again um, uh, these practices that has been collected and, and the tools that has been uh, used. And with what, what difference be, you know, between the two projects? Oh, um, um, a better. A better one, an improved one. Uh, I mean, um, the first one was a, 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 an action research where I think it's it's uh, um, uh, Nuella from your back is is there in the panel. She will explain uh, probably more about that. But um, the idea uh, uh, I think was uh, uh, for your back to um, uh, uh, pilot and to explore and to co-research about uh, these uh, transfer processes. So 23 networks have worked together and are sharing their experience. So now we have collected, I think, a lot of experience on this delicate aspect of transferring. Can transferring is not a copy pasting, of course. It's a reinterpretation, a bottom-up reinterpretation that I try to show in this uh, short presentation. Yeah, okay. Um, I thought you said something quite interesting. You said you were not that, you know, interested in, in the concept of good practices. You did say something about it, but you, you also mentioned micro um, good practices. Oh, well, uh, why I was a bit reluctant because I'm working a lot uh, in, I'm, I'm a designer working with uh, a lot with public institution on public services and one of these so-called lab for public innovation that, that are uh, working with uh, the, a different level of, of governance in setting uh, innovation function in, in public administration. And, and a, a good practice is, sorry for if I'm a bit critical, but I think it's, it's a dialogue that we already had with uh, your back. A good practice is, is a dangerous word. Because, because when you say there is a good practice, then you create a, a cognitive attractor, if I may say. And, and people tend to, uh, to copy paste and, and to say, okay, we have to do the good practice. And, and this was, I think, a great uh, work and dialogue in, in Biocantine to say, um, you know, you, you, I, I, I presented very quickly, uh, uh, one of the tool is, we call it proud of it. Proud of it is because all the, the transfer cities, the one that, that wanted to, to transfer the practice of Monsanto, they said, we also are good practices. We also have a lot of things to exchange. We are proud of it. And we collected all, all these uh, cases. So um, I think this is the, the right uh, mindset to make a transfer. A transfer is a reinterpretation, a local reinterpretation, inspiration of uh, good practices elsewhere. That was, I was a, a little bit careful on that. And we, we, 
we um, now to the second part of your question is about this micro good practice. We we call them uh, uh, transfer starters. Uh, a, tra a transfer is is difficult to to start to get the buy-in of the city uh, and all, especially of all the stakeholders of, of the kitchen staff that that uh, um, had to, to change their habit. So we have these transfer starters and then we have also transfer enablers like, like the, the, the posters uh, that start the, 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 the conversation. Of course, in a two years transfer period, you will not uh, change land use management of a city, but you can leverage on it to start the, the, so, the social and, and strategic conversation between the stakeholders to have a, a, a discussion on the futures. There is very, very seldom discussion on what we will eat in, in, uh, in uh, 20 or 24 years. Mm -hmm. 